Hi guys, welcome back. I hope you are having a good day and everybody's happy and healthy where you are. Today I wanted to show you how I made some clusters that I'm going to be using in the journal that I'm working on. I got this idea, I think I first saw it on Roxy Creations YouTube channel, and instead of creating individual clusters like on one little sheet, she did something where she took an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper or something like that, and she glued down the base layer first and then she just built on that and I thought that would be a really good idea and I thought I would try it to see if I liked it. I absolutely love it. I think it's an awesome idea. I felt like I was much more productive doing it this way. I was able to get nine different embellishment clusters done in one like sitting and it was a lot easier to handle. I didn't feel like I had to like try to finagle or hole of the little pieces and make sure they didn't fall apart. I kept everything flat this way and I kind of just worked around and what I ended up doing was I put down a base layer of all of this um, what is it uh, dictionary paper that I coffee dyed or stained as my base layer and then I just took pieces and scraps and things like that all around my stash that I've been using in the journal and then I placed those down so I was able to put like like that doily you saw, I put it in three different places. I took a piece of scrap paper from Tim Holtz and I put it in a couple different places. So it was nice because I could work on all nine at the same time and put a couple similar elements on different ones, but then they all still look re re really, really different. So like I mentioned, I, I highly recommend this. I think it's a great idea and I, I felt much more productive. I got a lot more out in one setting than I would have if I was doing these individually. So thank you, Roxy Creations or Rachel for the... Um, suggestion. I think she actually watched another video that I'm not quite sure of who may have had this idea first, but that's where I was to see the idea. So I want to try it myself. I think I also saw it on Gail Augustinelli's YouTube channel too. So either of those, if you don't know them, which I can't imagine that you don't, uh, make sure you guys check them out. They both have great videos. Um, Gail and Rachel both uh, talk through their videos. They don't do voiceovers, and that's really nice too sometimes, so I like to watch that while I'm crafting. So it just kind of depends on what you like to do. So basically, I, like I said, just kind of taking all these little scraps of paper that I've been using in this journal and kind of putting them all over the place. I have some ledger paper, I have some graph paper, I have the doily, I have extra pieces of scrapbook paper that were basically going to be trash if I didn't do this. The music paper that you see there, that is wrapping paper that I picked up from Tuesday morning. So I have a ginormous roll of that, and I've been using that in my December daily, and I've been using that in a lot of my junk journals. And I really like it because it's got like that craft paper and it's kind of a thinner paper it really is nice so if you want to thicken it up I just add some glue stick on the back of it and put it on a piece of uh, cardstock and then that way you can thicken it up but for clusters like this you don't need to do that here is some purple I wanted to lighten it up or brighten it up a bit with some different colors so I did pull out this cardstock here and I am inking a lot of these edges I just really like that look and especially with the cardstock it's got that white core and I don't want that showing in this particular um, layout or this particular um, these particular clusters I just like the darker edge them and you'll see me putting that ink on all the pages or all the scraps it's just the distressed oxide vintage photo so as you can see I'm just kind of tucking things in here and there I have this sheet of tags this also came in the paper pad that I'm using so I uh, you'll see me put about three different tags on these clusters as well and because I see that there's a hole or a fake hole in there I do have to punch those out I can't just leave them like that Later on, I will add, I think, some string to at least one of them. I'm not sure if I add string through all of them. A lot of times, I can't leave the tags without strings, but in this case, I can't remember if I added strings to all three or not. Here, I'm just looking for another tag. I'm going to pull this one that I can use vertically or horizontally instead of vertically, and I like how that fits in on that left center cluster there. So hopefully you guys are doing really well. Things are kind of loosening up around my area, so we're able to start going out more. More stores are opening. Um, they're still doing all the social distancing and putting all masks on and things like that, but it is nice to start getting out, just being really, really careful when we go. So I'm hoping that is a good sign. Hopefully things are going to move in the right direction and we don't have a resurgence of people getting sick too much. Um, I know that is, I guess, inevitable to happen if we start going back out again, but I'm hoping that it will be very minimal and the people that are most vulnerable, you know, are protected and we can keep them safe. So I hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys have been getting out. Maybe you're gardening. Maybe you aren't going out anywhere, but you're able to get out in your yard and the house. That's good too. 
I've been doing lots of gardening lately. We got a bunch of mulch that I've been putting around. We got some more plants. I bought some tomato, a tomato plant that I'm going to put on our deck. I've been pretty busy and trying to get my workouts that way since our gym is currently closed. But anyway, now I am moving on to using some of this Tim Holtz washi tape. You can see I have torn some of the pieces. I've kept some of the pieces full size and just kind of put them around where I think they would look good. I like using different elements here because then you get the different textures. So you have the paper as one kind of texture. Doilies are the other. I'm going to add string to the tag. This is another texture. The tape is kind of a more shiny type of texture. So I like doing that on these clusters just to give some variety and dimension to everything. So I'm just using my fine liner bottle here. It just has some Scotch quick dry glue in it and I glued everything down. And I'm going to take this whole sheet over to my sewing machine and sew down. And you can see I did zigzag stitches, straight stitches, and I did some circle stitches. I think I like the circle stitches probably the most of any of these. Now I'm just cutting everything or ripping everything apart. I want to make all these things with ripped edges. So I'm going to roughly rip all of them first and then I will go through and rip them more closely and get them kind of what I would like. So I did all that. I didn't have you watch me rip them all up. But here is what they turned out like. And now that I have the bases done, I will ink around some of the edges. And now I'm going to do some more embellishing. Most of the things I'm going to do is adding butterflies and I think a couple birds. And I believe I add some floral printables too. So I'm just going to kind of put these around where I think I want them. And then once I like where they are, then I'll start cutting everything apart. And so you can see here, by the magic of video, everything's cut out. And now I am just going around trying to figure out what I can do and where I could put the flowers. I put a couple of flowers down. I cannot remember where I got these printables. It was from an Etsy shop. If anybody's interested and would like to know, let me know in the comments below and I should be able to look up my recent purchases and, and let you guys know that. So just leave me a comment below if you're interested. Now I'm just going around. I'm seeing where everything's going to look good. I, I'm inking the edges of the flowers. This is These were just printed on regular printer paper, so they are kind of thin. So you have to be a little careful when you're doing the inking and such. Just using my vintage photo distress oxide again. And then once I have everything where I want it, then I'll start gluing things down. And then I also I will be using some cheesecloth and some buttons on here. Here are some of the little dies that I cut out in a previous video that I showed you guys. These are those Tim Holtz little bug dies where I had the um, stamps and the dies set together. And I'm trying to kind of see where they might fit in. I think I put a couple down. I don't put too many. I do put a little bee down. I think I put one of the butterflies or moths. I think that's pretty much it. I kind of kept it simple on this. They just didn't seem to quite fit on these, so I end up not really using a lot. Next, I'm going to start gluing everything down, and then I think I'm going to bring the camera in a little closer so you can see each individual one a little bit better here once I start putting the cheesecloth on. So bear with me for a second. There I go, getting it down a bit. This one I'm just going to put some cheesecloth in the background. This is just cheesecloth that I picked up from Amazon and I dyed it with some coffee or tea. And I like it all kind of bunched up on the back of these or as part of elements. So the more bunchy and grungy looking, I think it looks best on these. I think it just balances and just, again it's another texture and I think it just balances out these little clusters really really well. Just using my little card there to push everything down. That cheesecloth obviously has a bunch of holes in it. I don't want to get that glue all over my fingers, mostly because if I do, then it just sticks everywhere. Here I ended up sewing it a bit because I wanted it to be a little more bunchy, and by sewing it with that zigzag, I was able to kind of get it bunched up just a bit more. And then I will also glue that down with some 3 and one More cheesecloth on this one. This one I'm going to put a little strip down the side, and I believe I sewed this one as well, if I remember correctly. I'm going to stitch this with some embroidery floss, just some black embroidery floss, just a really messy like running stitch, nothing fancy at all. I could have went to my sewing machine, but I thought this would be kind of fun. It's a little bit thicker thread, and I thought it would give a nice um, extra color or texture to it. And you can see I just went back and forth a couple times, and I'm just going to tie a knot. Really kind of sloppy. That's kind of what I was looking for here. I didn't want anything too fancy. And then I'm just going to kind of ruffle it up and push it back. Glue that down again with my three and one. Love this glue. I just purchased some smaller bottles and they're working pretty well. I kind of like it. Um, it takes less time for the glue to go to the tip when you're getting low. The jury's still out on whether 
I'm going to keep using those little bottles or not. I've only used them a little bit. So far, they're working pretty well. And it's not like volcanoing out the top, which is what I have problems with. Once this uh, bigger bottle got low, it started volcanoing a lot off the top, and I couldn't get the stop. No matter what I did, I changed kind of the inside of the cap. Like I kept the little foil cap there. When you open the glue up, I try to keep that there. I took it off. It, nothing seemed to work. So the little bottle seemed to be working a little better in that respect. Here's some vintage trim. I think it's pillowcase trim that I picked up from an antique shop. Love this. It's the perfect colors. It's got this blues and pinks in it. It's really, really pretty crocheted trim. Again, just adding that on. It looks really good with that little butterfly that I put on this one. It's a pink winged butterfly. Adding more trim on this one. I'm going to use some more of this kind of like, I don't even know what this kind of trim is called. It's more crocheted trim and I really like it a lot. It's kind of dainty. It gives a nice texture but not really heavy. More of that same trim. I had a little off piece cut and then I'm going to add, I think after this trim, I'm going to start adding buttons down to a different embellishments. Just found some really awesome white buttons. I went to the antique mall a little bit ago and I was able to pick up some antique white buttons. Um, I think I mentioned in another video a couple weeks ago that um, I had went thrifting a little like once I started opening up some of the shops and things like that and I was able to pick up some really awesome white buttons, like a whole mason jar full of them. And I was out of a lot of white buttons. You'll see in a little bit, I think I'm going to show you my button stash. It's a lot of buttons, but they're mostly colored buttons. I didn't have a lot of white ones, so perfect find. I was pretty excited. And, and the booth was, I think, like 20% off, so that was even better. Here, I'm just taking some coffee dyed muslin and putting that in a couple different places as bases for the buttons that I'm going to be putting down. And I just tr snip that a little bit and then rip it. I like the frayed edges. Here are some brads that I've had in my stash forever. Um, I used to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator like years ago, and I had picked up these little cute brads, had in my stash. I was going through my stash trying to figure out how I could use some of my stuff up, and I thought this was perfect, so I'm going to add one there. I think I add one a little bit later on onto another cluster. Here's my button stash. You can see got lots of I have lots of uh, colored buttons, not many white ones, but these color ones do work for this layout. Just sewing them down with some of that same black embroidery floss. I like the thickness of this, so I thought they would look good on the buttons here. Just going through trying to figure out what I think is going to work best. Again, just going to stitch it on with my embroidery floss if I can get it threaded. <laughs> Lots of finagling here apparently. I was having some struggles. Just going to sew that on right through the paper and everything. Seems to work really, really well. And there you go, another button sewed on. Here I'm going to put three different buttons on this one. Again, using the same embroidery floss and just sewing them on. These are going to be kind of a white cream ones. This is where I realized I didn't have very many left. I am going to also add some crisscross stitching here, and that's what I'm punching right now. Just use this towel kind of as a, like a mouse pad or something like that to be able to punch through. So that's a good um, thing to use if you don't have like a mouse pad or anything. You can use like a little towel or something to kind of cushion so that you can push that poker through. Just adding those two cross stitches. Again, just adding some more texture and dimension. I have the thin stitching from the sewing machine, but I went a little bit more there on the right hand side. And I like how that turned out. It looks like the little piece of paper is stitched on. And here's where I'm going to kind of audition a couple different buttons trying to figure out what's going to work here. I end up picking these little three here sewed them on. I think we're coming pretty much to the end here. This is, I think, one of the last clusters that I've done, and I will show you all of them all together at the very end. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you had a good time today. I hope you learned something um, on the video. If you have any questions about anything, about printables or anything else I've done, make sure you leave a comment below and I'll answer you as soon as I can. If you liked the video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, I would love to have you as a subscriber. I uh, do a lot of junk journaling right now, uh, but I do plan on doing some more Project Life. I grabbed some photos from Persnickety Prints, so I'll be doing that. I took last year off from doing Project Life, and I'm, I'm missing it, so I want to get back to that. So you'll see that too. So for all my old subscribers, if you're looking for that, I'm hoping to have some videos up, you know, relatively soon. It's kind of hard to be very 
consistent on my videos just because of everything going on and working from home and my daughter being home and all that, but I'm going to try my best to get some videos up. So here's how they all turned out. I really like them. I think they look cute. Um, this is the point where I kind of put them out, look at everything, see what I might be missing. I can see here that I didn't put some string, so I end up do putting string on all of these, I think. And I just like, again, that texture that it gives, and it feels like it's not naked without that. So I have that one last, last brad left. I'm going to add it here onto this one, and that's pretty much it. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me, and I will talk to you again next time. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.